YouTube, what's going on? Well, I've got cars. Kind of was ramping up the fines. A lot of weeks there, nothing. But finally, we found some cars. So let's take a look. Went some off hours, found some things. Found a couple of things at the old uh, antique shop. It's kind of like uh, these things are passing through to new collectors. So let's just get this old school one out of the way. This is finally going to round out some of the army stuff I've been looking for. So vintage power wagon ambulance. This goes back to when Johnny Lightning actually released this casting. So I'm happy to find this. A lot of people ask tons of money for these. You know, they're still Johnny Lightning. But anyway, let's take a look. Really super clean card. I took it out, though. I really don't care because I wanted it loose. So this is basically the old school Army Olive Green. And it's the uh, ambulance. So what are we? The WC-54 right over there. There's the other stuff. Look at that. Same stuff they're releasing right now. <laughs> so this one goes back to... Let's do a little archaeology here. Can't. When I looked at this, it was like, yeah, there it is. Oh, two down there up in the corner. And I think the casting is, let's see, right about 2000. Now this one was sitting in the package, no problems with it or anything like that. Um, but the uh, axle, whatever the chassis has to keep it up, doesn't stay. So kind of got messed up. Plus the tires were off the rims. This one's still suffering. I put the tires back on the rims, but 2002 till now, 20 years, 20 plus years sitting in the package, sitting with the wheels smashed, so probably be more of a display, but this is the one I was looking for, I wanted the original army color scheme, I don't, who knows when they're going to do another one, but like this, most of them have been, you know, the weathered ones, or we had this blue one come out, which I like, very similar, But I wanted the, definitely wanted this one. So, and all of them, they did back then, came with, came with a simpler green. You can see the tampo work a little bit different back then. You can see the white. It's a little bit, you can see through the white a little bit more than you can on this one. And I kind of like, if you look at the printing, that looks a lot better, but I had this too, and I couldn't say, I mean, the blue, you'd think it'd be Navy or Air Force or Army Air Force, I guess, back then, or maybe that's Korea, who knows, someone with more, more knowledge about these, and we got the old Flathead 6 in there, it's pretty cool. Okay, or L head or whatever you want to talk, however you want to say it. Okay. So I like that thing. I'm glad I got this. You know, the whole place was having the boost sale, so like the whole place was like five, ten percent off, so you had a little extra. But this one was definitely basically let me put it this way. This is I paid for what probably was hanging in the pegs for back in 02. <laughs> or a little bit cheaper than that, you know. It's funny, ten dollar car back then, you know, ten fifteen still now. Or what they should be anyway. All right, quickie here. I found this on the pegs today. I kind of liked it. It looked like a a caramel candy. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. Just a simple old cheapo M2. You know, with the little base, but no no uh, acrylic topper. Just this the old base. Let's see if that'll actually. So. I like this because it's just a straight up hard top car and it had a nice set of wheels on it. So I figured we'd take it. No opening hood. This is their basic release, but with the plastic base. 
you know, this versus metal. M2 doesn't take uh, the whole thing as detail serious as like an auto world would say, let's say, but they do make pretty good 50s cars. They really, probably the number one value for the early atomic age cars, the mid-century cars, definitely, definitely on top of that. So when you see kind of cool ones like this, I'll pick it up, but muscle cars, uh, I do like the trucks, the trucks do well, but not 100% on all the castings. So 57 car, you know, like kind of like they got the big and littles on it. So kind of a cool drag vehicle. All right. Let's see what we got next here. I was going to move through. Oh, another one that I was able to fill a hole in the collection. This goes back to last year or more, even more than that. This was actually loose, but the person put it in the blister, but didn't have the inner blister. So when you saw it, it was just shaking all over, but I have the white one, never found the red. And this, sometimes it goes like that with Auto World. Or, uh, you know, they get a new case in the store, but the old, the B set or the A set, you know, sometimes you just see the B forever and ever and then never see the A and vice versa. But it's kind of how it goes with Auto World. I don't know how they ship them or if they get them the same way. I don't know. But sometimes they'll progress through the series, but only have like a B set and then alternate the A. Then months and maybe even a year later, you'll see the A set piece put out. Well, maybe I'll get lucky in the future for this one. But again, this was in that booth and on sale. So not too much to look at. I haven't changed anything on this vehicle. I'm just glad to fill a hole in the collection. I don't need to chase the ultra reds or the ultra raws. I'm not that crazy um, personally for doing that. But I could see the allure. Auto World is, they make just enough cars to kind of want to complete all the sets. But I really just try to complete either castings that I like or certain models. I'm not necessarily trying to get everything, but most of the time I get a ball. But this one is definitely a must have. So. 86 truck. Yeah. So the 86, they did the step side, which is really going away at this point. On, on this body style, anyway, with the older style. And here we go. So, second to last year, 87 for the square body. It's good looking, I must say. Get my hands out of the way. So I'm definitely a fan of it, um, but needs a little correction. So we always get the little shins in there and we get it handled. But this one might stay like this for a while. So good looking. Does look nice on the screen here. Okay. We've talked about square bodies a lot. So many, many videos on the channel about these trucks and details about them and all that. But uh, right now we're just we're just kind of taking a quick look because it's part of the collection now. It's gonna fit with the other one. All right, this is another one. So I kind of like the GT five hundred cars. This is one of the more recent releases. This is the one right before we'll start probably seeing the van releases. So this is a twenty twenty two release four. And, you know it's already May and we're starting finally seeing these on the peg. So. You wait, it seems like Target's definitely ordering cases. So a lot and just as much, if not more, I've seen on the pegs than Walmart and Meyer around here, which is a grocery store. So they get them, but they're always either behind the times or they don't barely put anything out anymore. You know, they might, I feel like they have the cases, but they don't put them out. Anyway, Target, you know, they put them up, get them out of there pretty quick, so. These seem to be showing up. I think the last batches of Auto World's mostly been there. This one actually caught my eye. I like the color on it a lot. We've talked about the difference between this one, GT500, uh, and then GT350 or whatever from Mini GT. And that's a really good casting. The wheels are awesome on that car. But this is pretty good for the design philosophy. I've talked about this with Auto World. They're 
into making things out of metal, just like Mini GT, but a little bit heavier casting um, tooling process, a little bit thicker because they have the opening parts and they don't care about putting the mirrors in. So a little bit more of a mid price point, but it's, you know, in their own way, they're just every bit as good with the style design and casting that they choose as Mini GT is with theirs because, you know, they'll have separate exhaust and the Mini GT are less separate exhaust tips. This one is done, you know, they're bold with the fact that they're going to do it with the chassis. So, you know, they don't, they have painted uh, headlight and tail light, which I think is just a way for them to get it over with <laughs> and, and, and do the casting without having to tool up the lenses and everything kind of slows down kind of what they can produce. I think, you know, that's not bad. You know, if they know that they're going to be doing it, they're kind of really getting much better at doing the headlights and painting them in. They used to look a little jacked up, but they're getting better at it. It's almost, it's almost good. It's almost better than the, at least for clarity. If you look at the headlights on the Mini GT, they're good too. I like the way the, the LEDs stand out in there. It's all black, so kind of like that. And you don't have this on the Mini GT. So awesome engine bay. Separate strut tower brace. And, of course, they paint and detail the engine with all its parts. So that's kind of cool. We got most of the colors on this. I think the other one, I guess this is version B, and it's called Iconic Silver. So it's kind of like a gray silver. I haven't mentioned it. This is peeling a little bit. Probably be able to get that to lay down some clear. I don't know why that lifted. It's kind of funny. It's almost like a vinyl wrap. Where that's applied. So Mini GT has this a little bit better. But it's supposed to be a carbon wing, of course. Interior is nice. So very nice looking Mustang. The other thing too, tires a little thick. Just a little bit. But. It's not too bad. What I did with this one was I went around and took all the flashing off. The tires, they got to sit a lot closer to the rim. So even though it's thicker than the Mini GT, it looks a little bit thicker. I think that's just because the Mini GT is really good with that. Their wheels and tires. But this is not bad. And actually, I kind of like it. It looks kind of like it's got a beefy track tire on it. Once it's set up right, you know, I put this one pretty pretty decently all right so cool car definitely happy to have that i like the other ones I got that big crazy green one and i just didn't take them out i wanted to kind of move through some of these castings we've talked about them in the past so I'll try to get to the the cars we'll look at here in a minute so i'm sure everybody's excited for them so i found the other one with the set so this is all part of the same 2022 release 4 version b it's a red 74 Challenger Rally. And just like the sister car, the A car, which was the gold, which I'll remind everybody, that had the, the Chrysler Rally wheels. This one has the Magnum 500 rims, which I black washed just to match the... One of the wheels was done correctly and the rest of them they all had kind of silver. So I just black washed the wheels and got them a little bit straighter. I didn't do anything crazy. I set the axle a little bit better on the rims. But other than that, car's the way it comes. So good detailing, of course, through Auto World. Got the nice headlight and our grills done very nicely. This one's, I think it's the 340 car. But it could be a 440. I think 440 you could get in this car. Still 74. I think that was one of the call outs. So this has good years. Like this one. So I was looking through the archive and I was like, oh, I have this body style, this E, the late E body. But actually it's a 73. So they did take the time to do the two. This is kind of a hard to find car, I guess, now, but they're out there. But the green interior, love this one. Very, very 
happy to have this. But anyway, 73, kind of tail panel's a little bit lighter on this one. Charger script, or Challenger script there. So, just a couple of differences. But they do a little bit, oh, and also they have the RT hood on these. This one's got the straight hood, which not too many of them had the normal hood. So it kind of makes that car kind of cool too. But anyway, <laughs> getting a little bit of auto world e-body crazy over here. So there we go. Let's take a look at that. So hopefully everybody likes that car. Um, look at this one more time. I forget if we looked at this. Their information in the back. So there we go. So yeah, happy to have it. Who knows how many they make. I'm sure the numbers are more than what they did in the past, but who knows how much more. Um, this was a, I was happy to find this too. I haven't found the other one, believe it or not, which I guess is black or something like that, but I had to pick black in this color, the mountain green poly or this, it's kind of like sea foam. So it's got the stripe and the SS wheels. This is a 396 car. I did paint the wheels a little bit more. Uh, Auto World does you know, a good job for being a $6 car, but some of this black didn't carry, carry all the way through where this wheel's supposed to look. So I just took the zero brush gauge and took some, some black and just finished it off. But other than that, they're doing a really good job striping the wheels. Look at the red pinstripe tire very very nice now this is the 67 i think the 66 do a little bit better with the hood just the way it looks you know they use the core but then they'll you know they're two different toolings so but you look at the car the real life car i mean the line here just kind of looks a little stubby but that's just because of the thickness of the hood. They do good, I mean, for what they can do. It just makes it, makes it look like it's a little bit flatter than it is. But if you look at it long enough, it matches the real car. It's just accentuated by having that gap and that the way the hood sits. But the rest of the car is perfect. And if it wasn't the 68 and 69 Chevelle, which really is my favorite, this is a close second. Definitely classic. The mid-year 60s General Motors cars, very, very nice vehicles. Clean. Very clean. They don't have a lot of excess crap going on. Good performers. Good performers cars, too. Very clean. Let's look at the engine. So it'd be the big block. It's before the 454 and all that came out. So 396, good good motor. I think 66, 65, something like that was when it was debuted. Because before that, the 427 was kind of the thing. And uh, then the car before that, someone's got to shoot. Chime in because I keep forgetting. So there's our tail filler. There is actually a car like this on Google. Google Images. Kind of this package. Look like an old auction car, one of the big auction houses. It'd be cool if it had a green tier. I almost feel like I should drill this car out and do it, but who knows? Sometimes I don't. With these cars, I'll have backups. So, and some of them I don't. Not all cars you get doubles. Some I just like to have in the collection, and I'll go ahead and tear them out. <laughs> okay. Let's move through. One of my favorite fifth gen Camaros. Uh, this is, what is this car? 2010. So, yeah. Their body style of the true LE, basically, of or their casting. Very, very high quality because it's going back to that first stuff where the headlights are separate. So, same one. Now they're using the. The, the, the rims, I guess they've been using these for a while. But anyway, they put it on the Challenger for the Hellcat wheel. Now they're doing it for the Camaro. This is a Hearst Edition car. Back then, 
made 50 cars for the states. So supercharged Dallas 3. So I think it's a, yeah, it's a 6.2. It's 426 horse back then with the supercharger, but I think there was more than that. I feel like 420 was the stock horse. I think it was closer to like 500, but I could be wrong, you know. Could be wrong, but I thought the that package came out a little bit more than that. So, here we go. Let's take a look. So, chromed out. I guess the reverse car of this is silver and black with silver being the main color. I can't remember. But the black looks very good, and I do like these rims. I wish I could find more of these because I feel like this set would look good on this. But I digress. Let's even get the hood open. So... Who knows? Let's let's see if they put the supercharger on it. We shall know here in a minute. Hood's very tight. Try not to break a blade in there. There we go. So it's a little bit of flashing under the hood. So let's get that down. There we go. So I have to hold it up with my hand here. Okay, sorry for the delay. All right, so it looks like we could have a supercharger, but also it looks like the stock engine cover. Of course, we've got cold air intake. They did have superchargers that kind of have the, the fit like that with the, with the surrounding thing, so we'll just say it is. <laughs> but... They usually had the supercharger sit up there in the engine valley, so we'll give it that. Small spoiler. Tail lights are painted, but we have a nice front end. I haven't tweaked this car. The other thing I found out looking at this, what I think what happened to my other fifth gen Camaro, the green one, was it kind of sits to the side. We have a little bit more clearance on this passenger side than we do you can see see if i can push that in so everybody can see you can see how much that is now that looks good that actually looks better riding like that than it does like this so the only way to cure that unfortunately is we'll drop the jolly old girl out and uh, i don't mind doing that to this one this probably be Something that might be hanging up for a minute, but who knows. Now, take a look at this thing one more time if we haven't looked at it yet. Let's see if that will go. Just in case we need to see. Okay. Now, this is a kind of a fun car, and I'm really happy that we're doing a big old Auto World uh, roundup. Uh, this is what I would hope I should find every time I go out, but it doesn't always work that way. <laughs> this is a casting that has never been in the collection, so very happy to have it, although in a funny form. Now, this is the old Lowrider 70 uh, Impala. This also was a Caprice for 70, but this is the Impala two-door. We have a car like this that they did the wagon. It's kind of close to this. But yeah, this is part of that series uh, four, or release four. So it's got the little 10, 14 inch Dayton wires on it. No hydraulics, but it, it actually looks kind of cool. I love the color combination, blue with the white. One of my favorites. You know, if it's not the green setup, I like this. This is a close second. So, I haven't had one of these. They brought them out fairly early in Auto Worlds, you know, when they started doing the cardboard box and started expanding their catalog of premium cars. This is one of the first. So really good casting, very high quality. A lot of good detail. Now that they captured the shape on the car good, one of the notable things on these cars was the roof line where it had a bow in it. And then the tail lights. And the integral bumpers, this is right before 73, 74, when everybody had to do the big bumpers. So we had that big 70s car, but without the all the excess bumperage. 
as you'd say. So these are the Dayton wheels. It's got the little spinner on it and all that nonsense. I'm not a big fan, although in this situation it looks pretty good. But I believe, I don't think this car is lowered, but it could be. If it is, I might just have to leave it alone. But this car is definitely probably coming due for a wheel swap. <laughs> so I'm just going to figure out what we're going to do with it. But what a great looking car. Just amazing. You can see why these are popular. Hopefully I found the cherry red one, that wine red. And it's got the torque thrust wheels, which looks very, very good. That's probably going to be a hard car to find. So hopefully we come across some of that. Nice big block Chevy in there, hopefully. Yeah, 454. All right. Good old car. Now, one last auto world before we get into some, some fun, some fun premium cars. So I finally found the white version of the Conquest. And hopefully they'll do the Mitsubishi Starion soon. Basically with these cars, they don't have to do much. They just have to kind of tamper them differently. This one is in white. No special nomenclature for the white, just white. There's our information about Mitsubishi. 2.6 four cylinder, 173, 223 foot pounds. That's pretty good. And that car probably wasn't that heavy. So this one's awesome. It's got the actual color of that funny brown red interior that all the the JDM cars had that were came, you know, the Toyotas had this color. I mean, they all had this purplish brown. So this they captured it perfect. It looks like they went down to Home Depot with their color swatch and got it done. A little bit, why they tamp over the uh, weather stripping on these cars? They always leave these gaps, but that's easy to touch up, so not even worried about it. <clears throat> Take a look at those wheels. And then I brought the red one down just so we can remember. Hopefully, really need to find the, or buy the black one, the black starry on that. Auto World has produced. I need to get that. They're still out there. Just a cool car. So rare. Not very many of them were sold, and not many survived. They become cars hard to find parts for, and you know the story after that. So you either had to keep up on them when they were relatively new and keep things going and kind of get parts or have parts cars or it's very hard to kind of find one of these totaled and bring it back and there just wasn't that many sold very cool car though the steering wheel they did everything perfect so then it rolls nice now i had to adjust everything on it not not much but it didn't have to do any new axles or anything i just had to get the wheels on straight and then take off some of the flashing on the tires. You can see how nice these tires sit on the rims once you get them cleaned up. All right. Now, let's look at some fun, fun premium. First, a one that we don't see on the channel too much, but every once in a while, if you're a big diecast person and you're like, I have my brands. I can dabble, if, you know, here and there, but these are my core stuff. I'm definitely on that camp, but there's always those cars that the other competition uh, that you might see from afar produces. And you're like, you know what, if I see it somewhere, I'm not going to go after it real hard, but one of those. So that lined up with what happened with me. This was in one of the local shops, and this is a very obscure brand right now. Still, I mean, for... wide release you gotta be a collector basically trying to it's really not stuff you'd find so sometimes we got the resellers and all that getting those boosts well this one was out and this is fun because this car is basically like a mini gt just with a little bit more delicate parts and they put left hand drive on a 510 so finally the datsun um, came 
the way I wanted to purchase it, even though it's got the JDM mirrors, it's fine. I don't have anything against the JDM cars, I just prefer the left-hand drive in the collection. So anyway, nice, simple red car, not all um, graphic up with a bunch of stuff and ad van and whatever, else, monster energy. I just want a nice, chill car, and this is it, nice west coast feel of course we got the bmx rack that's kind of the other thing that kind of i wanted this car for and basically for the price of this car it was less than an online car with shipping so i got a great deal typically if you do find stuff like this they're always over overpriced locally so this is just a regular decent human being selling this vehicle and i'm glad i purchased it i, I kind of saw it one day and i thought about it and uh went back and got it and i'm glad i did this is a cool car separate lens detail uh all the bumper i mean everything is very very good just like the land cruisers that we've looked at from tarmac and the the volvo and stuff like that so you can see the tail lights on this these are cool cars, you know, rear wheel drive car. I believe the front had disc brake. Um, stick, you know, uh, stick shift with a really healthy four cylinder. Light, handled well. The wagons actually had space in them. Just cool, and look at the front end. Everybody loves that front end. It's nice to have one in scale. They have the Mini GT ones that are really cool. I haven't got one, I really probably will get one. They've made so many of them. And I realized that they kind of emphasized, you know, it's not 100% 164 scale, but the car rolls really well. It's kind of like more like a Hot Wheel scale. So in that respect, I'll probably pick one up. But this is kind of waiting to see what's graphic since they always change the color of the car. We'll just sit back. There's going to probably a livery that I'm going to have to have, but. Nice stock 510 car, Bluebird, just awesome. Really, really cool. And it's got the little removable bike and everything. So, soak it in, got the nice little mini light alloys on it. Little front air dam action. Just sweet car, really, really sweet. I think I want to put a hitch on it and let it tow stuff. Little stuff, I don't know what, but something. Maybe a little camper or something. So, kind of looks cool, period looking. Kind of looking for a parking space down the, down the aisle there. Except for the bike, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, typical day, huh? Down at the parking lot. Smelling the Mustang kind of traveling time, I guess. All right, so. Now we're going to talk about some race royalty. So, I boned up on these cars a little bit. And both very revolutionary cars both came with came out within a year of each other and they really pushed what was important going forward it wasn't just all about big tires and horsepower at this point in the 70s um formula one you know being the technology leader and driver that they they are really had some some heavy duty rules and Teams, this is their way of getting around it. Well, the first one that came out was the Terrell P34 six-wheeler, which Mini GT has just took on in 164 scale and said, let's get it done. And there's some really great technological advancements, I'd say, on the scale version just as much as the, the full version of the car. So... Really amazing detail for 164 scale at a price point that's basically, let's face it, it should be under $15, and it is. Uh, I hopefully you don't pay over that. But they're using the Formula One spec uh, Cosworth Ford, which actually is in the Lotus that we're going to look at too. Uh, double four valve, so quad cam, as they called it. So look at the air intakes. They didn't just put a slab of plastic. It's actually got the air intake hole right there. Roll bar separate. 
Hopefully there's no dust on this so we can look. You can see this area where the windscreen area is separate, where that would probably be the rear view mirrors. You can see the tread detail on the slicks. Car rolls amazing, absolutely amazing. The two front wheels replicating the 10 inch specialized wheels and tires. When they produce this car, remember this car goes very fast, really don't have this style tire in a racing form for Formula One. So these are basically made to order. So that kind of proved an issue. We'll talk a little bit about the car. We won't go too crazy. I mean, there could be a whole hour long documentary on it. Aerodynamics of the day. So basically what prompted this, long story short, is that the FIA, I guess, F1 ruled that this has to be one and a half meters in width. And that's good. So they were using wings, but the tires would stick out. Once you could see the back. And so they were saying, you know, what if we could tuck the tires in if there was a tire or design that we could tuck it in and get them behind this airflow so it would be smoother. We cut this air, we can go faster, etc. But you really can't bring a bigger tire in too much more because we have suspension and room for the driver because you couldn't make the car too long either. So you couldn't just make it longer. <laughs> And of course, you had stability issues. So, they did come up with a small tire first, but obviously this smaller tire became overpowered at the cornering speeds and the performance of this part of the car. <laughs> so they said, well, let's multiply it by adding another tire. So, they have this set up. And actually, for a little bit of 76 and 1777, these cars ran before they finally made the rules change to just having four tires only. But what a cool car. Um, Ford, basically a three liter V8, about 500, 550 horse, I guess is about that time frame. But amazing car. Had a lot of wins. I had some mechanical, I guess, issues, but did have wins. And it did well enough to have other manufacturers kind of um, do prototype six wheelers as well. Of course, this was the only one that actually raced was this one so awesome box i got the north american um one the imported one and get the separate if they do the international box i'll probably get that and just keep it sealed this is like when the panel trophy came out probably deserves to be i think this one should be a second one for me just because it's awesome I love it. So there's a little bit of the history on this car and its iconic livery right there. Just awesome. I guess now they can do the historic races with this for a while or since, for a bit anyway, since some of the ones that uh, are still around, they were able to get a tire manufacturer to make these again. So that was able to let them go out on the road. And another car really, really really cool car and actually probably my favorite of the two 1977 this is the lotus 78 a continuation of the 77 and this car had a, another kind of evolutionary step in the in the thought of designing these vehicles and this had active aerodynamics underneath the vehicle we'll flip this car over in a minute but take a look at this this thing is just as detailed as the Tyrrell this is just amazing in the black and gold with the Mario Andretti livery just awesome car white seat just amazing the scale on it's perfect look at the inboard disc brakes detail I'm looking at this now because it's under magnification so this is your inboard disc brake Fire bottle, maybe, I don't know. There is your sway bar. You have your axle detail, which they have a solid axle in this car. Both cars, I didn't show it, but amazing uh, rollability. So extractors here, cooler here, I think, as well. 
So they're still using the same thing. But what they were thinking of is if we invert a wing, it'll create pressure in the opposite direction, i.e. we want to be against the ground. We don't want to fly. We want to be going the opposite direction. We want to have friction. So can you believe it? They designed a system where to this day, this was really revolutionary. They're able to use that principle and apply it to this chassis. And it was amazing. They they the ground effect they created by inverting it. And you can see that Mini GT did a, a commendable job with kind of highlighting this. Is basically they were able to make the car as it was driving faster hunker down and hunker down and hunker down the faster it goes. And that's why now, you know, the cars, as soon as they reach a certain speed, they could be driving upside down and it wouldn't matter. And that's how they're able to corner as fast as they can. Up until this point, getting downforce came at the sacrifice of drag. It slowed the car down the more that the speed went. This time... It was actually creating a situation where the air was escaping as well as using the negative pressure to draw the car down. So we weren't getting that buildup of air pressure. We were actually releasing it. And that was part of the, the situation of dynamics of the aerodynamics of the vehicle. So very, very cool. And they kept improving on it. This, this really only lasted a year or two in its current form. It went to the Lotus 79 after this because there were some weak points. Um, there were some issues with how the aerodynamics worked, it was a great start. Uh, there was one situation where when the escaping air exited and hit this section here, which is really looking like the older style Formula One cars where all this is exposed, the chassis pieces, the air would not get exit smoothly and it would upset the back and it would get a little light. So, Still improvements to be made, but look at the engine detail with the velocity stacks, the twin injection, or the intake scoops around the driver's roll bar. Just incredible. Absolutely fantastic model. Another one that probably deserves to be a carded model as well, but it is a per. I mean, this thing. It can go down probably the Hot Wheels track and, and be a winner. I mean, it's very, very, very nicely. Um, the chassis is set up perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. It sits perfectly level. So, very, very excited to have these. I'm glad that we were able to share them with everyone. And, uh, well, more cars to come, of course. And we're finding more stuff every day. And uh, hope everybody's finding the cars of their dreams currently, too. <laughs> well, thanks, to everybody, for watching and new subscriptions and uh, more cars to come, of course. Because when stuff like this is coming out, can't wait for what, to see what's next. Till next time.